This is a recommendation by user EQ6 What if Naruto was the son of Amaterasu and Chaos movie? Son of Amaterasu and Chaos by the fear within its disclaimer, I do not own anything. Starts Naruto's POV the war is finally over. Hopefully, now nothing threatens the world like Madara and Kagaya did. I've got to say I'm not used to the peacefulness. Ever since I was a child I was beaten up, tortured, and shunned by the villagers now I'm being treated like the Hokage, possibly even better which makes me feel weird. I've got to say being the Ten Tails Jinchuriki isn't that bad every time I get bored or lonely I go to my mindscape and talk to the Nine-Tailed Beasts they're like brothers and sisters to me and guide me if I need it. Also don't forget after war was over everyone got into relationships quick. Sasuke with Sakura, Ino with Sai, Choki with Samui, Shikamaru with Tamari, Hanada with Shino, Kiba with some Izunuka girl, and surprisingly Kakashi Sensei with the freaking Mizukage. What was her name like Mei? My? Anyways, can you believe if me or Guy Sensei to have a wife before Kakashi Sensei starts a relationship? This relationship thing is also a problem with me as much as I hate to admit it. I'm pretty lonely after the war since everyone's in a relationship, and we all barely hung out with each other. I even think Tsunade Obakan is thinking about placing me in an arranged marriage, but I want to be in a relationship with someone who truly loves me and sees me as my true self not the hero of a pointless war. I would trade all my accomplishments for the lives that have been lost from that war with no cause. Well, I'm starving gonna eat premium rain. Tap tap tap. I opened my eyes, snapped out of my thoughts and looked at the window, and saw a silver-haired elite Jonin reading an orange book. Kakashi Sensei, what do you want? I ask, rubbing my eyes and stretching afterward. Tsunade-sama needs to tell you something and wants you in her office quick. Kakashi said as he left my window. I wonder what Tsunade Obakan wants me for maybe it's time I become Hokage of Konoha. Hopefully. I got dressed in my usual orange and black jumpsuit with the Uzumaki swirl in the back and on my right shoulder, my ninja sandals, and my most prized possession my Konoha headband. I also got a mysterious gift after the war it was a katana. I haven't told anyone about this, but whenever I stab things with it, it summons the Amaterasu flames that Sasuke uses with his Sharingan. After that I head straight to the Hokage's office on the way I had my hands on the back of my head as I stare at the clouds in the sky and the beautiful warm sun which I don't know why makes me feel better every time I get bored or hurt. The same feeling appears whenever I look into the stars as well. Hmm. I'm really weird. Am I going insane? Never once in my life have I ever thought so deep in the caverns of my brain. Screech. My face paled the only enemy that I can't slay or shove a Rasengan in the abdomen, fangirls. Man I've got to ask Sasuke how he avoids them seriously one time I was in the hot springs relaxing after the war alone, or so I thought dozens of girls were taking pictures I swear I was blind from all the flashes from their cameras. After five minutes of waking and avoiding fangirls I finally arrive at the office as I opened the door I see Tsunade Obakan and a red-headed woman, and when I said red hair I mean red, blood red. What do you want to tell me, Tsunade Obakan? You're finally retiring and handing your position as Hokage to me? Naruto said. Tsunade chuckled and said, Brat, I'm not retiring yet. Anyways I'd like you to meet Amaterasu here. You know her as Kashina Uzumaki. As the red-haired woman turned around, she looked exactly like my mom when I saw her while fighting Kurama. Needless to say, I was shocked and angry. Why angry? I'll tell you why. Tsunade Obachim what kind of sick joke is this do not desecrate my mother's death like that why are you doing this to me and you? I said pointing towards the Kashina or should I say Amaterasu wannabe, get out of that henge and respect my mother's death now. Afterwards, I got a smack in the head by the woman. Which I can say hurts more than Sakura's heavy hits. OWW. What should do that for you hag? I said to the woman as I rubbed the bump on my head. First of all, let me explain this. Sochi, I'm actually a kami the Shinto kami of the sun and universe and the matriarch of the Shinto pantheon. The reason why I want not able to tell this to you during your fight with the Kiyubi is because I would not want more things getting in your head losing focus in the war. Congrats, by the way, I told Shinigami to make Madara suffer and made sure I punished Kagaya good, Amaterasu said. My eyes widened and ran for a hug, and warm tears fell from my eyes. I don't know why, but my doubts have been removed. I knew this was my mom. I asked my mom while sobbing, Ka-chan, if you're a Kami sobs why did you leave me when I was a asterisk sobs child? Amaterasu's pav I'm so proud of my son. I went to Tsunade to get him and put him in his father's realm to a planet they call Earth. 
I could not help but smile seeing my child turn into a young adult so fast. I was about to say something until he asked me a question, Ka Chan, if you're a Kami, why did you leave me when I was a child? I've got to say after that, my heart stung remembering the memory seeing my son tortured by the vile villagers. I'll make sure I visit them soon with permission from my good friend Shinigami. I shed a tear and wiped it and said with my most sincere voice, Naruto when I died I was in my mortal for so I needed to reform which took oddly enough 17 years hence why I'm here now. Please forgive me. Consider this as a late birthday present since your birthday was a week ago. As I shed more tears. My son hugged me again making me feel like the weight on my shoulder has been lifted he told me, Ka Chan I'll always forgive you no need to cry remember what I said during the fight with the Kyubi? I nodded, I told you and dad that I never blamed you guys for what you did and that I'm glad I have parents like you. I cried again this time tears of joy making me wonder what Minato and I did to have a son like Naruto not only did I give birth to the child of prophecy, but the exact child of my dreams as well. Speaking of his father, I have to tell him who Mina Kun really is. Sochi, now that you know who I am, I'd like to tell you who Minato really is. I said, taking a deep breath. Who is he, Ka Chan? Naruto asked me. A miniature black hole appeared in my room, and a man appeared out of it. The man was none other than my love and only love Minato or should I say chaos. Man, he does know how to make an entrance so hot. Wait, serious thoughts on we can do that later. He he he. Naruto's pave kamui like thing appeared in the office making me tense as I saw a figure exiting out of it afterwards I saw a certain blonde haired blue eyed man that is the famed and loved fourth Hokage, Minato Namakaze. TT2 Chan. I asked in bewilderment, shocked seeing my mom and dad alive. This has to be a dream. I thought. Nope, it isn't Sochi, Naruto. Both my parents said as they looked at each other and laughed. Um. Privacy, please do not read my mind. I said, making both nod. So who are you, Tu Chan? I assume you have a godly name and that you took Minato Namakaze as a mortal name. I asked. My mom and dad both looked at each other and looked like they're reading each other's minds after what seems to be a minute and a half both nodded and looked at me and my dad spoke first and said. Naruto I'd like to tell you that I'm not from this world in fact I'm from another pantheon which is called the Greek, Roman pantheon and we are in your mom's pantheon the Shintos. I was shocked at the fact that there's multiple worlds and pantheons out there. Cool all the possibilities and worlds to save. I asked once again, cool Tu Chan Yu and Ka Chan are really unpredictable like me, which earned a chuckle from everyone in the room, so mom's the goddess of the sun and universe what about you? As I arched, one of my eyebrows up and crossed my arms. He cleared his throat and said, Well Naruto-kun my name is Chaos also known as the first being and the creator of everything in my realm. But in here you grandparents heir the creators and your mother took their role. As he holds my mom's hand, making mom blush. Sweet, my dad's really cool and powerful, and so is my mom. I wonder if they could teach me god magic wizardry stuff. So what are you guys doing here? I asked both my mom and dad, knowing that they would not visit me without a reason. My dad spoke up first and said, straight to the point as always. Well my realm needs your help your brothers and sisters are rising and plan on destroying my favorite planet, Earth and if they do they'll stop at nothing to stop me and take control of the universe and possibly attack different pantheons afterwards. I was happy that I have brothers and sisters, but after finding out their plans I have to stop them from overthrowing my dad and stop them from annihilating my father's favorite planet, Earth, weird name if you ask me but to each its own. I looked at my father and asked, why are they doing this, dad? And why didn't you tell me I had siblings? Surprisingly, Ka Chan didn't look jealous. Did she know about this? My dad looked at me with sadness in his eyes because of what happened to his children who turned evil. Naruto I guess they've gotten tired of my rule and want to take my throne as ruler of the universe and everything as for your second question they're not related to you by blood I simply created them to handle different powers to control needless to say they're really powerful and you are the only one who can stop them also you're my first ever child born naturally so is your mother which under hard training and determination you will become stronger than us not to mention you are the ten tails Jinchuriki. This caused me to smile knowing that I'll surpass my parents and I'll try my hardest to make them proud. I looked at my eyes with sheer determination and said who are they, and what powers do they possess? He smiled and looked at me with his blue eyes which turned black like the universe and said, you'll face your brother Erebus primordial god of darkness along with his wife and your sister, Nyx who is the primordial goddess of the night, Gaia your sister and the primordial goddess of earth and wife to Uranus primordial god of the heavens, Araya the primordial god of mountains, 
Pontus the primordial god of the sea, and Tartatus the primordial god of the underworld. My dad took a deep breath and said, those are your siblings who have defected and the most powerful as well. However, you do have a chance recruiting your other primordial siblings who have remained neutral and grew scared on opposing due to the power of your defected primordial siblings. As he handed me a scroll which contained a list of neutral and nice primordials like Hemera and Aether. I asked another question while scratching my head, do I have other allies other than primordials? My father nodded and said, yes you have, you will be allied with the Olympian gods which are like the Shinto gods but weaker, prideful, egotistical, and arrogant and it is up to you to change them in their ways. Great arrogant pricks like Sasuke against the most powerful beings in the universe. Great. Hmm. I wonder how I'll die should I blow up the planet at my final attempt. So when do we leave? I asked, wanting to get out of my morbid thoughts. My mom spoke up and said, you'll leave in an hour till then we wait here as Tsunade already sent messenger slugs to call your friends in her office as you say your goodbyes to them. I smiled in joy knowing I'll get a proper goodbye to my friends. Great another war, but this time, the stakes are much bigger. Okay, now I regret wishing to get some more action. Although the new world equals new opportunities meaning I could have a chance of getting a girlfriend in my dad's realm. I wonder if humans there look the same. Naruto's pa of all of my close friends arrived at Tsunade Obakan's office after 10 minutes of waiting, wondering why they've been summoned. Some had excited faces wondering if they had been called for a massive S-ranked mission and some had worried faces wondering if another threat had erupted. Needless to say, the Hokage's office was packed. The silence was broken when three figures appeared behind Tsunade. Of course, all of the ninjas pulled kunais out as well as their respective preferred weapons. After they all identified the three figures they had mixed emotions of shock and awe they noticed Naruto's parents, after the war Tsunade announced to the villagers Naruto's lineage, as well as a different looking Naruto. Naruto now has changed in appearance he grew to a 6 feet 3 height that towered all his colleagues. Not to mention he had a well-built frame gaining a bit more muscle. His hair seemed to change the most it was not the normal sun-kissed blonde that blinded everyone when the sun reflected upon it it seemed to dulled a bit and gained streaks of red. Naruto's whisker marks seemed to have dulled not making it too obvious. Sorry for Naruto whisker lovers but I really despise it so I made it dull and less obvious think of it as a healed scar, and lastly one of his most prominent feature change is his eyes I was not the normal sapphire blue everyone knew and loved his sclera, the white part in your eyes correct me if I'm wrong, is black and his iris and pupil have been replaced with a constantly rotating milky way with a bright star shining in his pupil and the abilities it can achieve are limitless. But it comes with a price it can make Naruto temporarily blind for 10 minutes but can be lessened with hard training, PM or reviews for ideas and special things the eyes can do try to make the abilities not too op. Also his attire has changed for the better his orange pants have been replaced with black anbu pants which have been blessed by both chaos and amaterasu which made it the strongest material in both realms and those with negative emotions and wrong intent in Naruto's eyes burn in jet black amaterasu flames upon contact. He also lost his orange and black jacket and replaced with a leather version with stripes of orange and the Uzumaki swirl spinning slowly on his left side. Same material as the pants and effect possible add-ons later on in the story. His headband also changed instead of having cheap stainless steel metal it is replaced with the Yata mirror, the Suzano shield, fragments which looks like red-orange metal that glows and due to it being the pieces of the sacred Yata mirror when Naruto channels chakra into it a shield materializes and intercepts the point of impact, but it also massively drains chakra like one-tailed beast amount, trying to make Naruto not too op. Needless to say, Naruto looks like a complete bad asterisk asterisk. He also has a pouch that acts like a storage seal, but it can store an infinite amount of things and can retrieve anything he wanted by simply thinking about it when he reaches into it. Now let's start with the weapons Naruto's mysterious katana's appearance has no changed increasing its length and its metal has changed into the blackest black before you could see light reflecting off of it and now it seems to suck it. Maybe he could release the light that is getting sucked into it. Genius. Or nah. The handle is now more comfortable and it engraved in kanji, which translates into, judgment, judgment, and the sword itself is as light as a feather. Naruto's shuriken and kanai's have been changed as well. It's made out of chaos metal which if cuts or stabs an immortal the wound stays permanently even in death unless the curse is released by the wielder. Now why does it feel that I've gotten taller, and why are all the girls blushing and the guys have their jaws wide open? I thought. Yo, guys, what's wrong? I said, waving my hands in front of their faces. 
My mom chuckled and snapped her finger, and then a mirror appeared in my hand, and damn I looked good. A little weirded out by the eyes, but yay still look good. What happened to me, Tu Chan Ka Chan? I asked. Though I have to admit I look damn good with my new look so I'll take my new look. Well, while we went and hid from the others, Mina Kun and I blessed you, thus changing your appearance and clothes. Also we've blessed your clothing and weapons as well, Amaterasu said as she tapped my forehead. I've given you the knowledge of all your appearance changes and knowledge of your blessings as well your clothing perks I'll add some more later. Minato Sensei Kashina Sama, what are you two doing here? I thought you two died on the Kiyubi incident 17 years ago. Kakashi said while everyone in the room nodded furiously in agreement. Normal Pav Chaos spoke first and said, to answer your question we did die, but that was our mortal bodies, you see Kushi Chan and I here are actually what you call kamis, everyone except Naruto, Tsunade, and Amaterasu was shicked with their mouths gaping. Amaterasu stepped forward and said, you know me here as Kashina Uzumaki the red hot-blooded habanero, but in reality, I'm the Shinto goddess of the sun and universe, Amaterasu. And to add a bit of effect, she turned the sun black with a snap of her fingers and turned it back. Afterwards Chaos spoke up cleared his throat and said, I'm actually not a kami from this realm as there are others out there I came in the Shinto realm to visit. This caused multiple of Naruto's friends to raise their hands for questions about different realms. No questions for now people ask Tsunade afterwards we briefed her. Anyways in my pantheon the Greek, Roman pantheon they know me as Chaos. Ninra Ghost I saw your review about Chaos I simply wanted him to be the creator in my story so forgive me and thanks for the review. The creator of everything in my realm my Shinto counterpart is Izanami and Izanagi. Everyone stood there in awe, finding out Naruto's parents are incredibly powerful and not ones you should trifle with. The room was silent until Kiba blurted out. Why didn't you use your godly powers during the war since Orochimaru Edo tensied you, Chaos-sama? Chaos said, first of all, not Sama stuff it makes me feel old. He was cut off by Amaterasu saying, that's because you are. Making everyone hold their laughter, he the continued. Anyways before I was interrupted by my 12 billion year old wife, I simply made Amaterasu older than the creation of the universe in real life the estimate is 14 billion so I made her younger so sorry if her real age is wrong please no hate. Making Amaterasu blush in anger and embarrassment. As to why we are here Naruto is going on my realm to help save the whole universe from his evil siblings and Tsunade called you all so that he can say goodbye, and no you can't come to my realm because only immortals survive if I bring one of you you'll disintegrate. Amaterasu saw the sad faces and said, don't worry, Naruto will visit from time to time, causing everyone to sigh in relief. After finding out Naruto's going to leave, everyone had tears accumulating in their eyes, even Kakashi and Sasuke, who were basically emotionless people. Let's just say what happened next was horrifying. Why? Naruto got bombarded with hugs. If he was a mere mortal, he would have died of suffocation. WW we'll miss you, Naruto-kun. Hanada said as she released him from her tight hug. Naruto chuckled and said, Now don't be like that. It's not like I'm gonna die, right? Everyone had looks of doubt in their faces after being told Naruto's going to face his powerful siblings, which makes the ten tails seem like an ant. Oh, come on, guys, have faith. You know what, how about this? I will come back at another promise of a lifetime, and last time I did it, Sasuke came back see. Sakura then playfully punched Naruto's shoulder and said, Idiot, you better or else I'm going to ask Shinigami to revive you and kill you afterward. Making Naruto sweat drop and chaos chickle murmuring something about, being like Amaterasu in the old days. Dobi asterisk gulp. Sasuke caught a murderous glare from both chaos and Amaterasu. Make sure you kick their asses okay. Also, get a girlfriend, too. I've been noticing your loneliness. Sasuke said emotionless. Wow, was I that easy to read? Naruto said as he received a bunch of, yes, and nodded. Chaos put his hand on Naruto's shoulder and said, well, the hour's up it's time to go. Naruto sighed and said, okay, before I go Konohamaru? Konohamaru and his gang was pushed towards Naruto. Konohamaru if it takes a long time for me to come back to Konoha I want you to be Hokage and make sure when I come back I get a huge ramen all you can eat fest alright. Konohamaru had an ocean of tears pouring from his eyes and said, you asterisk you got it, boss. Naruto smiled and ruffled his black hair. Well, bye guys, make sure Konoha is still in one piece when I come back. Naruto said, giving a thumbs up to everyone as they yelled, for sure. Sochi, it's time to leave, and when we arrive, 
Let's just say we'll make an amazing entrance that will make us worthy of gods and goddesses of entrances. Amaterasu said as Naruto chuckles at his mother's mischievous antics and wipes his lone tear. The three left going into a black hole like portal. After they exited, all he heard was a loud cocky voice yelling, WHO dares interrupt this meeting. Throne room 10 minutes before encounter with Chaos, Amaterasu, and Naruto. As usual the boring council meeting has started with the purpose of, improving, the world. But during the meeting Hermes and Apollo were on their phone sending pictures of potential mortal girlfriends. Ares was sharpening his celestial bronze spear mumbling about thing being too peaceful. Aphrodite on the other hand was writing in her diary scheming ways to destroy love lives of mortals. Hephaestus was on his iPad constructing a three-dimensional models of new weapons and armor. Dionysus as usual was asleep drunk clutching an empty wine bottle. Artemis was in deep thought thinking about how disgusting men are. And that she'll love no one. Hint. Hint. Maybe potential Naruto pairing. What do you think as much as I like? Artemis I think she's been really overused. But if you want me to make her Naruto's lover I'll set up a poll later on. Athena was as usual reading something although this time she decided to spice it up and read a scroll instead of a book. Demeter was thinking of a new brand of cereal that exponentially helps a person's body that could rival ambrosia and nectar. Poseidon was clutching his trident sighing thinking about his demigod son Percy and how he has declined godhood twice. Hera was scolding Zeus about cheating on her with multiple affairs while Zeus on the other hand was looking at the other direction ignoring Hera and thinking ways to get more power. Hades was daydreaming about new methods to torture in the fields of punishment, and Hestia the eldest of the children of Kronos and Rhea was tending her hearth sighing on how almost any mortal's family is normal and loving while hers acts like a bunch of five-year-olds whining about everything complaining, keeping grudges, being stubborn. After five minutes of pointless mess, Zeus slammed his master bolt to catch everyone's attention. He cleared his throat and improved his posture and said, Shall we start with the meeting? Everyone nodded in agreement. So it has come to my attention that multiple powerful beings are stirring around somewhere I just feel it. I agree with you for once, brother. Both Poseidon and Hades sat in unison. While Athena was already starting to think hypothesis. I see shall I investigate father? Artemis asked, already standing up, ready to leave. You shaw. Zeus was cut off by a huge black hole-like thing that materialized in the room spitting out three entities whose bodies are pitch black hiding their identities. Zeus clutched his master bolt and yelled with pride and cockiness, WHO dares interrupt this meeting. While the others sat clutching their weapons although quite intimidated by the amount of aura the three beings were releasing. Present Naruto's pav a. Uh. Mom and dad were right instead of a normal. Excuse me who are you and why are you interrupting us? The arrogant prick decides to yell with pride, not assessing who he's dealing with and talks before he speaks. I could not believe the Greek, Romans have stayed in one piece this long sure there's like that 1% that are actually kind like Hestia who actually cares for her family and I sense a desire of her wanting to fix this poor excuse of a family. Maybe Artemis for girls that is. Athena but that brain of hers think too pridefully and could cause her downfall, and also Demeter who seems to be a laid-back woman. Other than that, I see a bunch of idiotic beings who are supposed to represent the whole earth and be a role model for their sons and daughters. If screwing things that move and getting pregnant is their view of a role model in this world. But hry, I'm not to judge. They might actually be good people. I emphasize the word, might, on that last sentence. Anyways, if things keep going like this, I might as well defect on the other side and hope for the best. Smack, I deserved that and what happened to respecting my privacy, I thought. Yes, you do and don't defect. Remember, you can change them. You changed. Pain, remember and made him revive everyone he killed during his Konoha invasion plan. Also, I'm your mother. I can do what I want. She says in a matter-of-factly tone, causing me to sigh. Yes, Ka-chan, I was just joking. I said, you better, or I'll get Shinigami to come visit you and let him try out his new torture tactics. She said with no emotion. Okay, okay, I won't defect mom chill. I said worried, not wanting to be a guinea pig for torture. Normal Pav Chaos went forward and smirked and talked in an intimidating voice, is that the way you address your creator? As Chaos snapped his finger, revealing his Minato Namikaze appearance, causing a lot of goddesses to blush and causing Amaterasu to clutch her fists and glared at the women. El Lord Chaos. What do you want of us, Olympians? Zeus asked, scared that he might be punished for yelling at the creator of everything. Well, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to my family. Chaos said, causing Aphrodite pout, 
knowing she doesn't have a chance to take the creator. Amaterasu walked forward and nonchalantly stomped her foot causing the black shadow to disperse, and what revealed was a beautiful redhead woman in her mid to late twenties with her fancy royal kimono reaching all the way down to her feet simple yet stylish. Now this caused a bunch of gods to open their mouths daydreaming about their fantasies, with the beautiful woman who no doubt looked better than Aphrodite, and also make a bunch of goddesses excluding Hestia and Artemis very jealous. Chaos was simply proud of his wife, making people react like that, and Naruto went to overprotective mode, and glared at all of them. Amaterasu snickered at the reaction and said, as you may know there are some different pantheons out there like the Norse, Egyptian, and some others I'm actually from the Shinto pantheon. This caused every god and goddess to widen their eyes. I am the matriarch of the Shinto pantheon you know me as Amaterasu, Shinto goddess of the sun and universe and wife to your creator chaos. Everyone in the room knew not to mess with the woman knowing that the Shintos were very powerful beings that equal to primordials in the Greek, Roman pantheon. Both chaos and Amaterasu spoke and placed their arms on Naruto's shoulder and said. This is our son Naruto Uzumaki the only natural born child of chaos and I he is the Greek, Roman primordial of hatred, space, time, elements, the usual lightning, earth, water, wind, and fire, bravery, respect, loyalty, and the primordial god of all primordials, and Shinto god of beasts, chakra, destruction, peace, elements, and Shinto god of gods and heir to the title of creator of the universe and heir to the Shinto throne as ruler of the Shinto universe as well. That caused Naruto to gape his mouth wide open, knowing his domains and caused the Olympians to know not to trifle with fish cake over there. Chaos then released his shadow hiding him causing every god to look in envy, and every goddess blush and drool at the sight of a overly blonde teenager with unimaginable sapphire blue eyes. Yes Naruto can switch from his blue eyes to the galaxy ones and please tell me what to call it also Naruto did not know he switched his eyes from the galaxy to blue he accidentally channeled chakra to his eye causing the change, his well-built body, his tall height, and his sense of style. Naruto's pav no kami no please no more fangirls this is a million times worse since their goddesses they are immortal. Although a certain silver-eyed, auburn-haired goddess caught my eye, was she the man-hater? Once again, tell me if you want Naruto, Artemis. I got off my thoughts and simply said, um, hi, causing everyone in the room to chuckle. Dad pat on my shoulder and told the gods and goddesses, the reason to why I'm here is because evil primordials are rising with a purpose to rule the whole universe and overthrow you Olympians and I hence why I arrived here with my son he is going to aid you all as well as the nine primordial beasts within him. Widening everyone's widened eyes some more if that's even possible and paled everyone's faces matching Hades skin color. Mindscape finally talking with the tailed beasts. Kit, we'll aid you in another stupid war as well as well as train you since your domains concern us beasts. Kurama said with all the other tailed beasts to give thumbs up and not agreeing. Thanks you all this means a lot to me and I promise after this stupid war I'll release you wherever you want although I got a feeling Kurama here is staying with me with his girlfriend Matabi am I right? I said, wanting to agitate Kurama since I see him as an older sibling. Both Kurama and Matabi glared at me, wiggling their tails furiously. Shut up, Kit, Naru-kun. Both Kurama and Matabi said, causing the tailed beasts and I to laugh. Alright, see you guys, I said, receiving, buys, from everyone. Back to Naruto's Pav Hades surprisingly spoke up and said, so that must be the disturbances Zeus, Poseidon, and I were feeling. With Zeus and Poseidon nodding. Agreed. Chaos said, rubbing his chin in deep thought. Suddenly a bright flash appeared in the room revealing two primordials who are my brother and sister Hemera and Aether laying down on the gown in the middle of the throne room both were battered and beaten, and everyone gasped as mom, dad, and I rushed towards them. Naruto, Chaos, and Amaterasu rushed towards Aether and Hemera's side. Chaos and Amaterasu knew that they could not help as much as they wanted to due to some stupid ancient law that forbids the most powerful being on each pantheon to use powers to aid both mortal and immortal affairs. After seeing the terrible condition of the two primordials, Zeus quickly sent Apollo to aid Hemera and Aether as he teleported to their bodies. The Olympians were terrified seeing two of the most powerful primordials in such a horrible condition. Apollo told Naruto to feed Aether Ambrosia while he feeds Hemera with nectar. After feeding them, their wounds started to heal fast, like the Kyuubi's regeneration that Naruto inherited from Kurama due to him being sealed within Naruto practically ever since he was born. Okay, I'm going to teleport them in my temple's own personal hospital room and put them both there to rest and recover. 
They might be unconscious for about two to three days. Apollo said as he placed his bloody hand on both Hemera and Ether's shoulder teleporting them to his hospital room and laying them in a comfortable bed and called his personal nurses to care for them as he teleported back to the throne room. Naruto felt relieved that they were alive after seeing their condition. He knew that they would make it for he had been through much worse as a child being beaten, poisoned, shunned, and some more attempts that would scar a child's childhood. Even Naruto's surprised he'd stayed sane after all of those bad experiences also not revenge-filled and stayed loyal to Konoha. Apollo arrived back to the throne room as he sat on his throne, telling them about their condition and that he left his doctors and nurses to care for them. Naruto looked at his father with his eyes changing to his galaxy eyes and said, Tu Chan, who did that to Ether and Hemera? Changing his voice to Kurama's giving almost every Olympian shivers down their spines except for Ares who thought it was an amazing voice to use during battle. Chaos sighed and said, as I was studying their wounds it was as clear as day to who did it. Everyone was at the edge of their seats until a foul-smelling black mist appeared into the room and yelled in a scary voice that rivaled Kurama's, me. Naruto unleashed his Nine Tails mode, transforming into a gigantic orange semi-see through nine-tailed fox looking the figure behind the mist with hatred and rage and said using his demonic voice, you prick who are you? I'm trying to hurt my brother and sister like that. I'll cast you straight to Tartarus when I see you. The figure laughed causing Naruto to anger some more and said, My my little brother how can you send me to Tartarus that's impossible because I am Tartarus and Tartarus the abyss has no effect on me the only way to stop me is to. Well, secret. Anyways, Olympians heed this as a warning. This is just a sample of what I'm going to do to you when I capture you. Buy you weak fools and little brother. Naruto raised his eyebrows, tell little Ether and Hemera that there's more to come. As the foul-smelling mist vaporized, you can hear Tartarus' evil laugh as it faded. Naruto was still in his Nine Tails mode, intimidating all of the Olympians with the sheer amount of power and killing intent it spewed out. It made Typhon and Kronos seem like an ant compared to its raw power. Naruto's mother calmed him down somehow and transformed back to humans, and the council resumed afterward. Athena quickly asked a question, how did Tartarus hear or find us out in the first place? Chaos nodded and said, it's because of Amaterasu and I due to us being the matriarch and patriarch representing our pantheon. We have a special aura that can be easily picked up by nearby primordials. I see. So Tartarus is nearby. Athena said as Chaos responded, Well by near I mean about the whole New York state, but I suppose you can send Artemis to hunt him down since she is not as much bound to the ancient laws. I will not send Lil, Sis, Artemis, both Zeus and Apollo said in chorus. Chaos smirked and said, exactly, that is why I have a proposition. Zeus and Apollo quieted down, first of all I do not doubt your skills Artemis, but in a battle between you and Tartarus let's be honest you will not die but fade. Chaos said causing Artemis frown and pout, but she had to agree, so I'll send Naruto here to aid you hunting him down, and no he is not going to be your guardian he will leave your hunters after you two find and defeat Tartarus. Athena analyzed Chaos' plan and spoke up and said, I agree with this plan. Lord Chaos it will increase chances of survival with Lord Naruto around. I'm sorry, sister, but it is the truth you have to make an exception for your man-hating ways for now. Causing Artemis' face to redden with anger and say gritting her teeth, fine. Chaos spoke next and said, oh, and I will allow Naruto to have another god or goddess to come with him besides Artemis. Choose wisely Naruto. This caused Ares to stand up and raise his hand up like an eight-year-old in school yelling. Ooh, pick me while Naruto was in deep thought. Naruto's pav hum. I don't know who to pick Ares. No, he'll just rush and get himself killed. Hades. No, who'll run the underworld, though he could be useful since I guess of all the gods and goddesses he knows more about Tartarus. Poseidon. Nah, water will probably be useless if we go fight him in Tartarus, Hestia? Hmm. Maybe she is one of the most underestimated Olympian due to her kind and caring attitude, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's big three, level or even stronger plus her kind and caring attitude might make some defected minor gods join back. Aphrodite? Um. Unless we fight against possessed beauty products no. Demeter? Maybe if we want to overfeed Tartarus to death with cereal. Apollo? Hmm. Maybe just hope he doesn't get too occupied with mortal ladies while we're finding Tartarus. Plus he'll be too overprotective with Artemis, and the two will bicker and fight until our hunt for Tartarus is over. Zeus? Hell to the no nuff, said. Hera? Not a good decision. Dionysus? First of all why the fuck does wine need a god? Oh yay let's intoxicate Tartarus somehow and kill him that's a great idea. 
Hermes? I think about it being the god of travelers we could find Tartarus sooner. Hephaestus. His contraptions might become useful I'll make a note. And finally Athena to be honest I think it's either her or Hestia. Athena's wisdom can help us a lot plus with her brains she'll develop a strategy no doubt, and being a goddess of war with a brain no doubt that's a deadly combo. Sochi? Sochi? My mom said as I shook my head getting away from my thoughts. I asked, can I choose tomorrow? I'll really have to think about his one plus there's no rush anyways right? Normal Pav Chaos replied, you can and for your second question you have about a month to find him plus Tartarus has been recently reformed so he is still weak. Naruto also wondered where he is going to stay for the time being and said, so what do you Olympians have a motel or some place I can stay at until I find a permanent home? Aphrodite was about to suggest Naruto to stay at her temple via Charm's Peak, but was beaten by Chaos who said, I made you a temple at the nearest vacant plot it's your son, and you can modify it for your choosing. Naruto beamed with happiness imagining what he could make his temple look like. Naruto's mindscape, yo. Naruto you better make us each a gigantic room with our preferable habitats, Skikaku said. Don't annoy Naru-chan he's helped us enough, Matabi said. Don't worry guys I'll make you guys your own wonderful room so yeah. Thank you Naruto we all are glad that you are our Jinchuriki, Yuki said while all the tailed beasts nodded. Alright see you guys I promise I'll release you maybe after we hunt down Tartarus, Naruto said proudly. No it is not smart to do so. Think about it while we're staying at our rooms or roaming around the world you'll be fighting those evil primordials and you can't use our chakra nor our powers, Chome said. I have to agree kid we'll stay with you just release us later. Let's just hurry up and finish this stupid war, Kurama said laying down starting to nap. Okay guys bye see ya, Naruto said as he left his mindscape happy that his tailed beast friends are loyal to him and are willing to aid him. Somewhere in New York State. So father sent his first natural born child a. Erebus said via foul-smelling mist or as they call it TM Tartarus messaging. Yes indeed though we need to avoid him for now his domains are secret and his powers are unknown, Tartarus said with worried. What do you mean you were spying on them right? And what happened to your Batman voice? Uranus said playfully as he crossed his arms. Look I tried my best I was lucky enough to TM them and send them threats okay it was due to the disturbance I got a feeling father knew I was listening and decided to make it so that what I hear is irrelevant and harmless and I use that voice when it is necessary," Tartarus said frustratingly knowing he semi-failed his spying mission and that he was being teased by not using high evil voice. I see I'll make sure to make the Titans and the Giants reform faster as well," Gaia said leaving the TM call. Is that all brother? Nix asked. Ah yes let us continue preparations," Tartarus said as he left the TM call. Tartarus was frustrated knowing Naruto was definitely going to hunt him down to kill him or worse make him fade. Watch out Naruto you're in a world of pain when I get you. Tartarus said out loud as cracks on the earth for reeking the smell of dead corpses as he takes each step. Normal Pav, Naruto? Naruto? Chaos said waving his arms in front of Naruto's face. Oh yes sorry about that I was talking to Kurama and the others in my mindscape. I said sheepishly scratching the back of my head. Kurama and the others? Mindscape? Athena blurted out loud curious to what I'm talking about. Ah yes they Kurama is one of the Shinto primordial beasts sealed within me and I plan to release them from my hold after this meaningless war. Naruto said looking straight at Athena. Do they pose a threat to Olympus? Zeus asked worried about losing his power to his throne. No I don't suppose unless you try to use them as pawns or for your own personal good then they will leave you alone. Naruto said sternly making sure that the Olympians won't try to manipulate Kurama and the others after the war. So what Shinto primordial is Kurama? Athena asked summoning her notebook and pencil. Naruto went to his mind cape and asked, Kurama do you want me to tell her? Sure go ahead tell them I'm the Shinto primordial of demons and hatred. Tell them if they mess with me I shall take them to my personal demon torture chamber that makes Tartarus the abyss look like heaven. Kurama said as he went back to sleep. K thanks Kurama. Naruto said joyfully as he left his mindscape. Naruto cleared his throat and inhaled a huge breath of air and said, Kurama is known as the Kiyubi no Yoko or the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox I believe you saw his form earlier, as the Olympians nodded and gulped, now for his domains he is the Shinto primordial of hatred and demons also he told me that if you mess with him he'll take you to his demon torture chamber that makes Tartarus the abyss look like heaven, as the Olympians sweat dropped. Okay enough of that we will have to go, Chaos said while holding Amaterasu's hand. What? Why? 
Naruto said with sadness getting separated from his parents again. Sorry Sochi you see we heads of pantheons radiate so much power it attracts every vile beast to us, and exposing your location. Amaterasu said giving a sad smile knowing how Naruto felt. How come you powers feel normal? Naruto said while the Olympians nodded. You see we were just suppressing them for the time being. Also we can't suppress them for long, but I'm sure after this war we will be back as a family. Amaterasu said. We have to go Naruto we will be watching your journey. Chaos said as both Amaterasu and Chaos went inside a portal leading somewhere. Unknown Pav. You might have a good idea on who it is but who knows. So dear brother has a child eh? I'll have to ask him about him later after the sounds of pleasure is over seriously can't they take a freaking break. Plus I want to catch up with Amaterasu 17 years is a long time I need good gossip in the Shinto pantheon she left me hanging with Suzano's secret lover. I thought out loud as I left Chaos's temple teleporting to mines. Milady you seem troubled, one of my servants said. No I'm just simply bored and want to do something new plus I don't know why, but I feel lonely, I quickly said sighing. Well I'm sorry if it is not my place to say it, but milady why not find yourself a faithful boyfriend I heard about Lord Chaos and Lady Amaterasu's only natural born child perhaps you can hit it off with him, my servant said. I raised my eyebrows at my servant's statement and thought, was this the reason I feel lonely? I've got to ask Eros about this. Okay does anyone else have anything else to say before I dismiss the council? Zeus asked everyone. Naruto raised his hands and said, Lord Zeus I need someone to take me to my palace. Hermes, Zeus yelled. Got it pops come on Naruto. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Hermes said as he teleported in front of Naruto. Afterwards all the gods left resuming their duties. Why do you say that? Naruto asked. Well I've always wondered what Chaos Palace would look like. I know you're his son, but close enough. Hermes said as he grabbed my shoulder and flashed me in front of my palace. Whoa. Naruto exclaimed. Whoa indeed. Hermes said. The palace was magnificent it looked like a Japanese imperial castle with the rarest materials known to the universe used to build it. Bro Athena would be so jealous right now. Hermes stated as he chuckled quietly. Why do you say that? Naruto asked genuinely confused. Well Athena has the tendency to making every palace on Olympus look magnificent, but yours puts everyone's to shame. No offense to her her plans are great, but damn yours is just one of a kind. Hermes said as Apollo flashed between them. Hermes my man wanna come and whoa sweet crib you got there Naruto can you show us a tour? Bruh Athena would be so jealous right now. Apollo said as he led the two to Naruto's palace as if he owned it. Apollo approached the gate and tried to open it, but got shocked and blasted 10 feet away. The event caused Hermes and Naruto to burst out laughing. And not see cool. Apollo said as he recovered. Hmm. I think it only allows me to open it. Naruto said as he approached the gates and opened it slowly. Ah there you see now come on in guys. Naruto said making a gesture to both of them to come in. The three were at Naruto's palace for hours finding every nook and cranny. Apollo and Hermes left thanking Naruto for the tour and telling him to plan a party and invite them. Time skip. Next day Naruto got ready and went to the main gates and saw a roughed up Athena with her hair sticking up. Naruto opened the gate exiting his palace. I see you've got a problem there Lady Athena. Naruto said as he bowed respectfully while trying to keep his laughter. First of all no bowing and calling me lady and second of all how can I not enter your palace? Athena asked confused. Well you see my place gates only open to me, and only me. I think you know what happens if someone tries to open it other than me. Naruto said as Athena blushed in embarrassment. I see so it has its own self-recognizing system that's new. Athena muttered out loud. So, would you tell me why you tried entering my castle? Naruto asked as he crossed his arms. Well I wanted to ask you about its material seeing that it's different from the rest, and Zeus also told me to summon you, Athena said in one breath. Very well Athena I shall tell you what materials it is made of and give you a tour inside as well if you want, Naruto said as he gave a heartwarming smile. Athena lightly blushed at his smile and stuttered, I I W would appreciate it. Now let's go to the throne room I believe we've been keeping your father waiting for so long. Naruto said he touched Athena's shoulder causing her to blush, and teleported in the middle of the throne room. Throne room Naruto and Athena appeared in the middle of the throne room Naruto got into his temporary throne and Athena went to hers. Everyone noticed Athena's tattered look causing everyone except Naruto to raise their eyebrows. What happened to you daughter? 
Zeus asked to Athena worried if she got into a battle against a monster after seeing her tattered clothes. Athena was about to speak up before Naruto cut her off. She tried entering my palace via opening my gates, but the gates only open to me anyone who tries to open it gets shocked and blasted back. Hermes and Apollo burst out laughing falling off their thrones, and Naruto just chuckled quietly. Interesting so a self-recognizing gate mechanism then? Hephaestus asked. Indeed though it does have an invisible barrier dome that surrounds the whole castle bordering the walls, Naruto said. How do you know that such a thing is merely impossible? Athena said. Well why don't you ask Lady Artemis there? Naruto said as he glanced towards Artemis. Artemis blushed in anger and embarrassment remembering last night's event when she tried to take over her duties as she flew her chariot. Well you see as I was taking over my duties a flew over Naruto's palace with my chariot only to hit it and crash to the ground. Afterwards Hermes and Apollo continued to laugh even more then shutting up after seeing two silver arrows landing an inch between their family jewels. Okay back to important matters Naruto have you picked a god or goddess to accompany you and Artemis hunters on the quest to find Tartarus? Zeus asked. Naruto scratched the back of his head and said, well I pick. Just in community forum more son of Amaterasu and chaos by the fear within us. Naruto and Percy Jackson and the Olympians is overrated. T, English, Adventure and Romance, Naruto U, Words, 12k plus, Faves, 766, Follows, 806, Published, July 3, 2015 Updated, October 10, 2015 165 Chapter 6, Burn. Hello guys I'm back. Also thanks for participating at the poll Hestia will join Artemis and Naruto on the quest to find and kill Tartarus. Enjoy this chapter and remember I do not own anything. Chapter 6. Burn. Well I pick. Hestia to accompany Artemis, her hunters, and I on the quest. Naruto said as everyone's jaws dropped and eyes to bulge out. Artemis was glad he chose a goddess instead of a male, though she was still immensely pissed at the fact that Naruto, a ma no boy, was joining her hunters at the duration of the quest. Why me? I am not as strong as other gods and goddesses. Hestia said still shocked trying to comprehend what Naruto just said. Naruto shook his head in disagreement and said staring into Hestia's eyes, Listen do not undermine your skills Lady Hestia I sense that within you lies immense power and potential, and if you train no doubt you will be one of the strongest goddesses possibly surpass the big three in strength as well. Hestia blushed crimson red at his praise because never once in her immortal life was she praised as a powerful goddess. Zeus got angered at Naruto's statement and yelled, How dare you say she is stronger than everyone in this room especially me. Yes I dare because all her life she has always been seen as a weak goddess that would not hurt a fly, but her hidden strength could easily beat Typhon at any day, and I do not speak for her I speak for everyone in this room you all have untapped potential. Naruto said glaring at Zeus activating his galaxy eyes scaring the king of gods. Hestia if possible blushed even more redder at Naruto's praise she was glad no one glanced at her because her face looked like a tomato. Hestia will just slow down both you and Artemis on the quest take one of my sons or daughters instead. Zeus barked making Naruto wish he'd just shut his mouth. No. I personally want Hestia to accompany Artemis and I on the quest one assure you she'll be a goddess to be trifled with once you see her true skills blossom. Naruto hissed at Zeus causing Zeus to redden with anger. Primordial or not if my daughter and this quest gets jeopardized you'll wish for Tartarus. Zeus said with anger gripping his master bolt tightly. Everyone in the room looked at Zeus with shock and disbelief after hearing him threaten a primordial the son of their creator no less. Look son of Kronos threaten me once more and I swear on the river Styx, Chaos, and Amaterasu I'll get someone to replace you as king of gods. Naruto said as thunder rumbled at the distance. Everyone's eyes widen after hearing him swear on Chaos and Amaterasu's name at the same time as no mortal and immortal had the courage to swear upon Chaos' name as well as Amaterasu's. Suddenly two portals appeared beside Naruto as Amaterasu and Chaos appeared through it. Chaos looked at Naruto with a smile and said, My boy you are the only one with guts to swear on my name also take note as this is an oath you cannot break, but I can. You know forget about it later. Chaos said playfully to his son. The same can be said here Sochi I won't kill you if you break it like any other immortal who swears upon my name, but if you do break it I'll let you meet your uncle Shinigami. Amaterasu said giving a motherly smile to Naruto which creeped out everyone. Well it's time to go we'll be watching son. Chaos said entering the portal. Amaterasu hugged Naruto kissed him on the cheek and left as well. 
Zeus paled and was at the loss of words and just zipped his mouth shut knowing he'll say another stupid thing to Naruto. While Poseidon and Hades smirked at Zeus' reaction. Poseidon spoke up seeing his little brother speechless. Does anyone oppose Naruto's decision? Only Ares' hand rose. Zeus would have argued at Poseidon for taking over, but he was still shocked. Lady Hestia do you want to come? If not I'll pick Lady Athena if she is willing. Naruto said respectfully to Hestia. Before Hestia could respond Artemis looked at Naruto with one eyebrow raised and asked. Pick Athena if Aunt Hestia refuses. I'm getting suspicious at your choices at this quest boy. Athena on the other hand knew the logic in Naruto's words knowing that with Artemis, Naruto, and Hestia they could beat Typhon within seconds and give any primordial a run for their money, and if Hestia refuses to join the quest and Athena went as her replacement they still would have the strength that could beat almost any monster, titan, giant, and some primordials. Naruto looked at the goddess of the hunt with mild frustration and said, I pick Athena as a second choice to aid us in this quest because her wisdom, strategy, knowledge, and experience will help us greatly in this quest. Also do not assume that I picked another woman to accompany us because I plan to do something to defile them for I have a reason for getting a goddess to accompany us. Oh do tell boy I won't hesitate on putting an arrow to your pathetic heart if you try and attempt to reward yourself. Artemis said saying boy with venom. While every Olympian started to get worried seeing how Artemis talked to Naruto who by the way is leagues stronger than every Olympian combined. The Olympians wondered if Naruto will make Artemis fade from her threat. Naruto smiled causing everyone to shiver and said, I picked a woman because I know that we will be traveling with your hunters and if I were to chose a male such as Apollo it would not bode well thus slowing down our job to find and defeat Tartarus. Artemis' face flushed red with anger and embarrassment as she glared at Naruto with a burning passion of hate while everyone in the room except Zeus and Artemis to snicker and chuckle. Can I just say? Burn, B-U-R-N burn. Apollo yelled as he bumped fists with Hermes while everybody in the room either nodded and laughed knowing it was true for the first time in centuries Artemis got beaten by a male on a conversation. Everyone silenced when Artemis took aim and fired blunt arrows to Apollo's balls causing the sun god to shriek like a girl causing Naruto to try and hold back his laughter. Not cool little sis. Not cool. Apollo said as he grabbed his stomach in pain. I'm not your little sis. Artemis said as she pouted. Naruto cleared his throat getting everyone's attention and said, Again Lady Hestia are you willing to join Lady Artemis, her hunters, and I on the quest? Hestia gave Naruto a hearthwarming smile and said, I accept Naruto, and just call me Hestia. Very well milady, Naruto said respectfully, also the hunt for Tartarus begins tomorrow. As everyone nodded their heads in agreement. D does anyone else have a anything to essay? Zeus stuttered at the council still scared for Naruto's oath to overthrow him the next time he threats him. Silence erupted on the throne room. V very well see council dismissed. Zeus stuttered again causing Hades and Poseidon to hold their laughter seeing their little brother in such a powerless state. Everyone flashed away one by one as the only ones that remain were Hestia and Artemis. Artemis went up to Naruto slightly guilty for accusing him during the council meeting. She looked at Naruto and said, I'm sorry into jumping to conclusions earlier. Naruto looked at Artemis' silver eyes and said, I accept your apology next time don't go assume that because I'm a male I would do something vile to you and your hunters. Artemis gave nod and said to both Hestia and Naruto, meet me and my hunters at my palace we will start our hunt for Tartarus once we've gathered. Naruto and Hestia nodded and Artemis flashed away. Hestia walked towards Naruto as she was getting closer she lunged at him and gave him a hug as she was hugging him she whispered, T thank you for what why you said e earlier about me in the council. I've always been looked d down upon as a goddess, as she sheds a tear. Naruto surprised by her hug hugged her back smiled and said, no problem Hestia if you want I can perhaps train you during the quest? I would love that. Hestia replied back with a smile. Just so you know it won't be easy I'll train you like how my senseis trained me and they were pretty hardcore when they trained me I mean one time he pushed me of a cliff full of spikes so that I could summon a huge ass toad to get me out. Naruto said causing Hestia to go pale. Hestia realizing they were still hugging released her hold she blushed afterwards then paled remembering Naruto's training. Naruto seeing Hestia's unrest chuckled and said, Do not worry Hestia I won't throw you off a cliff I'm not going to train you as hard as my senseis trained me although I will gradually make it harder for you when you're ready. Hestia sighed in relief and smiled to Naruto, thanks you had me worried there. No problem and when we do finish this mission do you mind if you show me around Olympus? Naruto asked dumbly realizing he basically asked Hestia to go on a date with him without him noticing. 
Why yes I'd love T to show why you around Olympus when we finish the quest. Hestia stuttered as she blushed ruby red. Naruto looked at Hestia worriedly seeing her face red and touched her forehead and said, Are you okay? Are you sick? Why yes ss see you tt tomorrow. Hestia said as she teleported away leaving a confused Naruto. Naruto walked out of the throne room not wanting to teleport as he wanted to walk to his palace. As he exited he was greeted by two gods with a remarkably huge grin plastered on their face. So. Would you mind telling me what happened in the throne room between you and Aunt Hestia? Hermes said waggling his eyebrows. I believe they were hugging for 1 minute and 23 seconds if I counted right. Apollo said while Naruto blushed realizing that they were hugging for a pretty long time. Also asked her out on a date. Hermes added. What do you mean? Naruto asked with genuine concern. Apollo laughed at his denseness knowing what he said was the truth that he did not mean for it being a date. Hermes said chuckling. Dude you basically asked her on a date to take you around Olympus which is basically a huge as city that would take hours to tour. Naruto face palmed and blushed in embarrassment realizing what he did although his heart fluttered seeing how she accepted his request. Naruto had to be honest he did have a hint of admiration for Hestia as he learned of her wonderful personality. Also even though primordial he thought all the goddesses to be waaaay out of his league and seeing how Hestia a maiden goddess no less except made him burst in joy on the inside. Talk about a massive ego boost. Ah so you finally realized. Apollo said recovering from his laughter. Why yeah. Naruto stuttered causing Hermes and Apollo to chuckle. Dude here some advice do something unforgettable in the date. Apollo said as Naruto rolled his eyes. Okay now what else do you guys want from me? Naruto asked a little annoyed. Bro come on we bros don't talk to us like that. Hermes said as Apollo nodded his head furiously. Okay fine. Naruto said as he smiled he always wanted brothers and Hermes and Apollo acted like one to him. Alright. Okay we have to prank Aphrodite and Ares today. Hermes said as Naruto and Apollo grinned. Wait before we go what happened to Ether and Hemera? Naruto asked concerned. They're doing fine still unconscious though. They'll recover and gain their consciousness once you've returned from the quest. Apollo said. Okay stop with the chit chat let's go. Hermes said as he summoned pranking materials. In a cave somewhere the primordials is in the midst of a meeting via Tartarus mist messaging. So I have received word from our little mole that Chaos Brat will take Hestia on the quest to find me. Tartarus said with an evil glint in his eyes. Haha. That brat take Hestia. You've got a pretty easy task if I do say so myself Tartarus. Erebus said. Still though we must not underestimate them remember Naruto as a wild card. Nick said to her husband while saying, Naruto, with hatred. Also I've received rumors that dearest little brother has nine Shinto primordials sealed within him. Gia said causing every primordial on the meeting to widen their eyes in terror. TT that's J just a rumor are right? Asked a worried Tartarus. Every evil primordial except Tartarus laughed on the mist meeting. Brother as a little saying goes that's for you to know and for us to find out if you survive. Nick said teasingly at the primordial of the abyss. Not see cool as sis. Tartarus said causing Nick's to smirk. Also why don't you guys help? Tartarus yelled. Idiot. You missed last meeting we could not help because we still are in out weakened state even a strong demigod like that Percy Johnson or Jackson uh whatever. My point is even a demigod could make us reform only you can attack them with destructive force despite you still being in your somewhat weakened state. Gia said as Tartarus blushed in embarrassment. Okay anyone else have to say anything on this meeting? Erebus asked getting bored. Nobody spoke. Very well meeting is adjourned. Erebus said as he left with a buff of jet black smoke causing everyone on the receiving end to cough. If cough he had another domain cough I think he would have been the primordial god of darkness and drama seriously as he Zeus real father. Tartarus said causing every primordial to chuckle as he left gathering his monster minions to get prepared for his diabolical plan. The end.